In Jesus' name, we pray. You're going to say, Lord, send your word again tonight. Let your word speak to me. Let your word deliver me. Somebody begin to press a demand upon the word of God. Open your mouth, pray. Father, send your word tonight. We need your word. Let your word come and speak to us. Let your word deliver us. Let your word take us to the next level. Let your word bring fruitfulness and multiplication. Show us the way. Give us the secret, Father. Father, we need your word tonight. In Jesus' name, we pray. My Father, my Father. My Father, my Father. Oh, Lord God, by the power in the blood of Jesus, we come against any power, marine power, occultic power, witchcraft power, gathering against tonight's service. We command you, scatter by fire. Scatter by fire. Scatter by fire. Somebody begin to pray. Begin to pray. Father, every power, marine power, witchcraft power, occultic power, against tonight's service, we command it now to be scattered now by your power. Scatter now. In the name of Jesus Christ, we command you scatter. Scatter now. Scatter now. Scatter now. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, we thank you for your faithfulness. Lord, we depend on you. Let your word speak to us tonight. Lord, let your word deliver us, Lord. Show us the secret that we didn't know. Father, we commit this service in your hand and we declare it open. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and the Holy Ghost, let me hear you say amen. amen. Somebody put your hand for Jesus Christ. Let's welcome our men's choir. Keep clapping for Jesus. Keep clapping for Jesus. Keep clapping for Jesus. This is the reason why we are here. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you ready to praise God tonight? Oh, yeah. Is someone ready to give God a praise tonight? Oh, yeah. If you're ready, I want to hear you scream to Jesus. Hallelujah. Give him the fruit of your voice. Scream to Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Welcome your neighbor tonight. Say neighbor, you are welcome to God's presence once again. Tonight is my night. Tomorrow might be yours, but tonight is mine. Amen. Hallelujah. Is someone ready to praise God? Come on. I want to hear your clap. Come on. Come on. I want to hear you clap to God. Come on. Say, I can't go over now. I can't go over now. Say, I can't go over now. I say Jehovah, you are worthy of my praise. Say Jehovah, you are worthy of my praise. Jehovah, you are worthy of my praise. Say Hakeko, oh Fanana. Hallelujah. 
You are beautiful. Heaven on earth, I know you. Angels bow before you. You are beautiful. You are beautiful. Sing heaven on earth, I know you. Angels bow.
the beginning is the end. The Bible says it's seated in heaven and make it the earth is full too. Now imagine how big, how magnanimous, how amazing is that God. Do you think that God deserves our clap offering? The Bible says if we don't praise him, wait, relax, relax, relax. The Bible says if we decide not to praise God, he said he will raise a stone. So do you want an ordinary stone to take your place? So if you believe and you know that you're standing and you've gone through so many battles, God has given you victory. And that's why you're standing today. If you're holding your phone, put it on the chair. If your hands are too heavy, just put them down. Let's just give this God a, a two-minute clap of free. Let's go. Hallelujah. It's for God. It's for God. Are you doing it for God? Above your head. Above your head. Above your head. We give you praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It's for Jesus. Are you stopping? It's for Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. God is good. All the time. Praise the Lord. Are we ready for tonight? Have we uh, honor our spiritual parents? They deserve more and more. Can we give, give it to our Father and the Lord? You may take your beautiful seat. God is good. All the time. I want to believe that every one of us will be uh, blessed in one way or the other since yesterday. The men have been doing so great and amazing. Hallelujah. And I believe they will keep doing more and more in Jesus' name. Because they have raised the standard. So Holy Spirit is going to help us to scale through. Hallelujah. Um, I uh, don't want to waste much of your time. Uh, are the drama group ready? Before we call the drama group, you know, in the course of our Riaza, there are so many uh, bloopers and so many things that happen in our Riaza. And then, you know, we get to start Riaza with prayer. And then we finish with prayer. So, you know, to, uh, to my greatest surprise, you know, uh, as, a tech, as a cameraman, I remember there are some faces that when I'm on duty and then I carry the camera and I give them a close shot during prayer, you see their head falling off their ah, kaku, 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 kaku. So, you know, they are praying, they are vibrating. But to our own greatest surprise, when we ask them to close Riazza's meeting and then they just go like cold pop. In Jesus' name, Father, we worship you. And then is that stage fright and, or camera fright? Huh? Okay, stage fright and camera fright. Are the drama groups ready? Ladies and gentlemen, can we give a clap as we welcome the drama group for their presentation? Thank you, Jesus. I'm happy today. Thank you, Let Jesus. me go and visit my, son, uh, my friend. Mm. I'm happy. My son is traveling. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Pa, pa, pa. Ah, come in. Ah. Papa Peter. Papa Jumbu. Mm. How Papa are you? Jumbu, how are you? I'm okay. You are drinking again. Yes. You drink too much. I'm happy. You, uh, you want to kill yourself. You, 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 did you forget our sons are traveling? They are traveling to the most. You need Bible drink. too much. You must drink. Yes. You this is the happy. word of God. This be is happy, my friend. food. Uh -uh. It's not bad drinking. You drink too much. Sit down, my friend. Sit down. <sighs> Sit down. My friend, how are you? I'm good. But you drink too much. You it's have to good. limit it. It's not good for you. But it's not. Uh, we are happy. We need to uh, drink. Is it? Is it you can't be drinking. reading Bible. You can't be reading the Bible every time. This is a time for happiness. You need to. It is happy. the word of God. Word of this, God. Ah, it Stop is my food. Reading Bible, my friend. It is my food. You read Bible too much. Ah, I will read it. You read I will read it. Ah, my son. That is my son. My son. That is How my are son. You? I'm ready for you. Oh, okay. You are set to leave. Yes, I'm set. Need down. Let me pray for you, my son. Yes. Please 
down. Let me pray for you. Lead down, my son. Let me bless you. Lead down in Jesus' name. The Bible says, wheresoever the, the sole of your feet will step upon, there you will dominate. As you shall go, you will dominate. The Bible says, at least in a page for you, you are, what's wrong with you? The Bible says, it said, it, it said, we shall be like a tree planted by the riverside that shall bring forth fruit in due season. He said, whatsoever you shall lay your hands to do shall prosper. This shall be your portion, my son. Go where it shall be well with you. Sit down, my son. Sit down. My son. Papa. My son. Papa. Mm. It is well with you. Papa. My son, my son. Papa, Need down, let me speak on your... You've been giving me incision, incision here, 10, 12, 15. Papa, this kept that I'm going. <laughs> if I don't make it in one month, all your ancestors, they will die, yo. My son, my son, I am your father. It is well with you. It shall be well with you and on quarter. It shall be well with you and alpha. My son, it shall be, my son. Papa. The spirit of our ancestors is with you. Papa, it shall be well with you, my son. In fact, my spirit is with you. The spirit of our forefathers is with you. My, the spirit of our ancestors is with you. It shall be well with you, my son. It shall be well with you. Papa, Papa all these things shall be well. <laughs> Papa, one more to. I give your ancestor 30 days. My let son, us. It shall be well with you. Papa, let us walk them. Let us walk them. Let us walk them. Go, go. Papa. It shall be well with you. Go. Yes, they are traveling. Yes. Yes, yes they will make your us class. I know. I have prayed for my son already. It is my food. Yes, I must study. Yes, let's go. I'm telling you, see, my father ancestors are working. I never knew Cape Town is like this. You don't understand. Which you see, ah. everything is pure. Do you know Who what told you? Do you know what is pure? I don't know. Tell me. Do you know this chair? I know it's pure. When I was in the village, I don't wear such thing. <laughs> that reminds me. What? When Pastor was preaching, did you see that girl with nice arrangement like this? She's like this. Here is out, here is out. I was looking at that girl. Wait, wait, wait. I'm confused. You said. The way you narrate this, he, he. I remember your father. Church, 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 pray, pray, pray. This is my father. So you can still see, he, he, he. This is my father, I know. Uh, but don't, but can I be honest with you? Tell me. Do you know I'm that girl you. that sits close to uh, the protocol? Hello? This is the one that was uh, preaching. What did he, the one that was, Johnny, that was preaching? There was Johnny. 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 I was expecting you guys at our joint now. Nah. Which joint? See, yesterday night was so amazing. Tell him. Are you Tell him? No. Are you ready for this news? Tell him. Nah. My brother. Tell you. My brother. When I say God is good, say all the time. God is good. All, all the time. time. You all know the time is too big. God is good. All, all the time. time. Do you know that sister that sits behind the protocol? Which one? The fair one. Yesterday. Wait, wait, wait. The fair one. The one. Yes. The left side. Yes. You know. Uh, 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 all, that means all of us are watching that. That fresh one. That... See. Yesterday, God. Wait, wait, which one, which one are you talking about? The fair one. That one you're talking about. What, what happened yesterday? Hey, yesterday, I jam rock, she jam rock. As a matter of fact, the way she's lying down on my bed right now, only me can explain. Wait, 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 wait. Listen, wait. That, wait. You mean my babe? That fair one, my babe? So you even went there before wait, me? Wait, 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 wait. Peter, wait. Please. Wait. That fair one. Spare babe. What's babe? My girlfriend. What's my? In South Africa, is that thing not mine? What do you mean? Brother, What's mine? After you, it's me. After, it's see, tournament. Hey, after see, tournament. one Nemo, she needs to, she needs to sleep at my house tonight. She needs to sleep at house tonight. See, come. What's up? Jesus, okay, wait, 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 wait. Come, come. Let's, make a, let's come to an agreement. Okay. Okay, wait. I will eat small tonight. Call her around 3 a.m. She'll yeah, come and spend. Why will you eat small? No, see, come. Why stop it, though. I'll, I'll, see, I'm going to call her now. What's good? What do you mean? That picture this side.
Hanya dami ni mana kau mana bagi banyak aja. Hanya dua, aku rugu. Hanya dami ni mana kau siapa nak banyak aku. Hanya dua, aku rugu. Hanya dami ni mana kau siapa nak banyak aku. Hanya dua, aku rugu. Hanya dami ni mana kau siapa nak banyak aku. Hanya dua, aku rugu. Hanya tu. Hanya tu. Hanya dua mini mini kuat mini hanya dua. Hanya dua, aku rugu. Hanya dua mini mini kuat mini hanya dua. Hanya dua, aku rugu. Hanya tu. Hanya tu. I can't help you. I can't help you. I can't help you. Hahaha. Ah. Oh. Ah. 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 I can't stop you. I can't stop you. <laughs> Anyadu, I greet you. Great Anyadu, I worship you. Hey, Anyadu, today's another day. I want you to bring a rich customer into this shrine today. I don't want any customer from a poor village. I want customers with big money. Dollars, pounds. <laughs> Andre, you know when they bring good money, so I will give you enough gold. Hello. Who is that? Where is Baba? Is Baba around? What do you want? Say Baba Nicholas is here. I mean, you don't know me. Are you new here? What do you want? Say Baba Nicholas is around. I'm a regular customer here. What do you have in your pocket? Nothing. What do you have? There is fire on the mat. Say Baba, I'm around. What do you have in your pocket? Baba, Baba, you inside? Baba, what your customer is here, Nicholas. Tell Baba Nicholas is here. Huh? What? Leave shoe. There is fire on the mountain. Huh? Baba. My son. Baba. You are welcome. Baba. Hmm? I have been betrayed. Hold on. Baba, I have been betrayed. I know what brought you here. <laughs> Call the name of Ayandu three times. Ayandu. Mm -hmm. Ayandu. Mm -hmm. Ayandu. Okay. <laughs> Who is that? Who is you? What are 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 you? Anyandu said he knows the reason why you are here. Anyandu said you are angry because your friends they are intimidating you with their wealth. Baba, I arrived them in this country. And he also said you are angry. Because they took away your girlfriend. Baba, you are right. <laughs> because of that, you want them dead. Baba, slaughter them. <laughs> what do you have for Ayandu? Baba, I came prepared. I have their picture. Their picture is there. Look at their picture, Baba. This is a small thing for Ayandu to do. Baba, I trust you now. Eh, you know you are between a lot. Not his goat for free. You need to bring sacrifice. For Ayandu, we see you after this. Anything for the gods. Baba, nothing. There is nothing. Baba, see. If they are dead, their property will be mine. Okay. Ayandu, your son said there is nothing. So what should I tell him? <laughs> Ayandu said there is always a thing to take from you. Baba, make sure it. 
This wristwatch and this your gold, is it a real gold? I, I, I don't wear fake. And you don't need this, drop it here. Please take it. <laughs> I am do. <laughs> I am do. <laughs> I can see that this your shoe is very nice. <laughs> Where is the shoe from? Is it Gucci? Baba. It's Gucci. I don't need it. Drop it here. I need to. I need to. Nothing goes for nothing. You want I do to perform wonders, but you don't want to set to I do. We shall see. <laughs> hurry up! Slaughter them for me. Slaughter them. Hurry up! Hurry up! Hurry up! Hurry up! Hurry up! And that jacket you are wearing, I don't need it. Drop it here. Pull it! Pull it! Papa, my regular customer here. Hurry up! Hurry up! Hurry up! Hurry up! Hurry up! Remove the jacket. Drop it here. <laughs> Take. I want you to speak to Ayandu. Tell Ayandu what you want. Ayandu. 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 Kill Johnny and Peter for me. Slaughter them. I want them dead. <laughs> The rats that decided to dance Kelewu, a vulture in the presence of a cat, does not live to tell the story. <laughs> I <had> to. <laughs> it's time to perform. I do. 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 What is the name of the first one again? Johnny. Johnny. Yes. <laughs> Johnny. 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 I evoke your spirit into this baby. As I strike this baby, you shall die. You shall die. And you will never live to tell the story. Johnny. Johnny. <laughs> Look at him. Look at him. He's dead. Papa, I trust you. That's right. <laughs> Papa, you are the best. <laughs> and what is the name of this one again? Peter. Peter. <laughs> Peter. Peter. your spirit into this door. As I strike this door, you shall die. <laughs> Peter! Peter! Papa, this one is strong. Why is it not appearing? I, is there something stronger than I am doing? Ah, Papa, try something. Ah, I am do. Please, don't fall my hand. I am do. 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 Look, 
I can no longer see him inside this water. But I am seeing a strange man wearing white. Keep them. Keep both of them. I smell danger. I can't touch this one. Because the altar he belongs to is more powerful than I am to. I am the world altar is stronger than yours. The sacrifice his father sold to his altar is more higher than those rubbish you brought into my shrine. Ah! How dare you? Do you want me to die? Papa, you have never failed me. I have failed you this time around. I have failed you because if this one you are seeing, his father carried fire. I can see his father now kabushi here. Anything I try to do, he will strike me to death. I am to do something. I am to must do something. Papa, do something. Let me warn you. Do not try to hurt that man. Because if you do, you shall die. I am to do something. You shall die. I am to do something, Papa. I am to do something. I am to do something. My beloved brothers and sisters, as you can see tonight, you may be here tonight. Ask yourself a question. Whose lifestyle is influencing you? You may have been in South Africa with your friend. But the question is, what covers you? You are following the same brother who you both came. But the father is an intercessor. Why your father is a drunkard? Ask yourself a question. What is your foundation like? I urge every one of us here tonight. It has been declared our year of fruitfulness and multiplication. You can provoke your own altar by raising another altar. God bless you tonight. If you're blessed by that drama, can you just give them a big clap? Uh, just appreciate them. Are you doing that on your seat? Uh, can you appreciate this amazing man? Uh, hallelujah. God is good. Uh, how many of us are blessed with that drama? Hallelujah. So, um, you know, it's not just to entertain you guys. It's just for us to pick one or two things, message from it. And God will bless us in Jesus' name. Are the men's choir ready? Are you guys ready for the men's choir? Wait, wait, wait. They are not ready for you guys yet. If you're ready for the men's choir, can you just rise on your feet and welcome this amazing men's choir? Hallelujah! Keep clapping, keep clapping, keep clapping. Keep clapping, keep clapping. Keep clapping for the men's choir. Put your hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, the Bible says that in the presence of the Lord, in the presence of God, there is fullness of joy. Hallelujah. Uh, I want to thank the drama group for the special administration. Yeah, so people found it offensive, but please understand that it's just acting. Amen. It's just acting. Now, we have a special song. Listen, don't your neighbor say there is only one God. Don't your other person say there is only one God. If you know you have that one God, tell your neighbor say there is just one God. I don't know another. And his name is Jehovah. Hallelujah. I 
should be Cause you are God the Lord You set me free You are God the Lord You set me free Hallelujah
but I feel there is something that is there is something tonight look at your neighbor and say there is something for me tonight say there is something for me tonight say there is something for me tonight it is going to locate you wherever you are standing it is going to locate you wherever you are standing there is something to, something has broke loose in the atmosphere it is for you and it is for you somebody shout it is mine You are not leaving this place tonight the same way you came in. I declare in the atmosphere there's some things are changing tonight. Some things are changing tonight. Some things are changing tonight. If you believe me, shout it! Yeah. May this altar tonight begin to walk alongside with you wherever you go. May this altar begin to speak things that your mind cannot speak. May this altar speak for you even when you are sleeping. May this altar fight your enemies when you don't even know. Ah, stand up and jump and praise the name of Jesus. Kamanda ya da bahanga da ya rebusa, ye di ada hadus ya cah dia ada, mendeli bosa bayah, hirata brahados sadiba, ye be 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 sa, atos sata brahada sata, hey sabaya di bosa ti. Tonight, we are not holding this meeting alone. In the heavenly places, there is the cloud of witnesses. They are there. They are watching over us right here in Cape Town. Paul, Paul and Peter and James, they are in the heavenlies, but they are watching over this place tonight. We are not alone tonight. The power of God will be mightier than ever before. The anointing will be greater than ever before. Somebody shout, I receive it. Anything that you couldn't do before, I declare in the atmosphere by the power of the Almighty God. It shall be possible after tonight. It shall be possible after tonight. May you make some noise and jump and shout here. Yeah. Lift up your both hands. Everything that you've been looking for in your life. It is released in the atmosphere. It is released in the atmosphere. It is released in the atmosphere. I hear, I see those tears that you've been crying. There is a hand from the angel, the angelic hand that is coming to wipe away your tears. Ah, because tonight, as a prophet of God, I prophesy upon you that tonight is your night. There 
has never been a night like tonight. I feel I'm higher than where I am standing. Just lift up your hands and just open your mouth and just thank him. Just thank him. Just thank him tonight. Just thank him. Just thank him for a minute. Yes. Oh, something is happening already tonight. It's happening everywhere tonight. It's happening everywhere tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, hallelujah. Mighty God. Hallelujah. Just lift up your hands and say, Mighty warrior. Great in battle, Jehovah is your holy. Say, mighty warrior, mighty warrior, you are Jehovah. You are Jehovah is your name. You are the man. Find a way to take your seats tonight. Commando Santa Brahada Santa. Cabrahado Santa de Mana Bayadabos. Mama Mama Yalababa Santa Labos. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Just give hands for him tonight. I hear the Lord ministering to me tonight that there are deaths that are being canceled tonight. There are deaths that are being canceled tonight. There are deaths that are being canceled tonight. Somebody is coming out of the dungeons of death tonight. You don't, you won't even know how did it happen, but I hear the, I hear the voice of God. He says it will be done tonight and it will be sealed. And those deaths are in your name. You are coming out of that bondage of poverty. You are coming out. Shout, I am coming out. You will change your song when you wake up tomorrow morning. I say there's a message that will enter into your phone. Your phone will see a message that will change a song that you've been singing. I say tomorrow you're going to wake up dancing and jumping. You're going to wake up dancing and jumping. You're going to wake up dancing and jumping. Try and take your seats. Just wave your hands. Say in thee, O oh Lord, to I prove my trust in thee. Oh, do my in thee. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just touch your neighbor and say, tonight is going to be my night. <laughs> say, tonight is going to be my night. <laughs> Fruitfulness <laughs> and multiplication. I love it. It, it has worked for me. Oh. I saw it. Oh. Hey, I saw it. Oh. This one, it works so. Oh. If you can hold on to that theme. Ah. 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 <laughs> You're going to be something else. Oh. Already you are something else. Now, from the moment you got born again, from the day you got born again, you know, before Jesus Christ came to bring the gospel of the kingdom of God, on earth, you know, I will not take you before that, but just before Jesus came, there was a man by the name of John the Baptist. John the Baptist came preaching the gospel that was a bit unusual from the gospel that was being preached in the time when they, 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 they lived. John the Baptist preached the gospel, repent for the kingdom of God is coming. He said, repent for the kingdom of God has come. He said, repent. And then while he was busy preaching that gospel, he was telling people something that was strange. He says, I, I, I am not the one but I'm just a messenger sent to declare the good news of the one who is coming behind me. And then when the time came, Jesus came. And while he was busy baptizing them, he said, me, I baptize you with water. But there's somebody behind me. When he comes, he will baptize you with the fire and the Holy Spirit. And then now, when Jesus came, he said the same thing that John was saying. Repent, for the kingdom of God has arrived. So which means now Jesus was not the kingdom, but he came with the kingdom. Because the kingdom of heaven was impossible before Jesus came. So in other words, in order for anybody who was living for him to enter into the kingdom of God, he had to go through Jesus. That is why he says, I am, he, before he says, I am the way, he says, I am the door. Whoever enters through me, I am the door. Whoever enters through me shall be saved. And he will enter, he will come in and out and find pastures. So which means, Jesus was the door at which we can access the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But now he comes with something that is very, very powerful. He says, for us to understand this kingdom, we've got to repent. What repent means? Repent means change the way you think. Change the way you think. Repent means change the way you think. It's all about a mindset issue because he says you cannot enjoy the kingdom of God unless your mind has been changed. He says repent because this kingdom has come. Right. Repent for this kingdom has come. Now look at this. Jesus is coming to people who were once in the kingdom of God in the garden of Eden. But because of things that took place there, you know them, because of the disobedience of man, they found themselves outside of the kingdom of God. I believe that the Garden of Eden was the kingdom of God. The Garden of Eden and heaven was just exactly the same thing. That is why God was not knocking in the Garden of Eden. All of a sudden, during the cool of the day, God was just walking with them because there was no distance between the heaven and the Garden of Eden. 
So such that everything that was happening in the Garden of Eden is exactly what was happening in, in heaven. That is why after man was taken out of the Garden of Eden, after man was taken out of the Garden of Eden, the Bible says God put an angel at the entrance of the Garden of Eden with a sword of fire. So we were taken out of the kingdom of God. But now, after we were taken out of the kingdom of God, we realize that we have lost something that actually connects us with God. You remember what those, the team of people did one day? They tried to, to build a tower all the way to heaven because though they were on earth, they could realize that they have no connection with God. They needed God. They tried, and when, when, when they tried to do it, God looked while he was in heaven. He said, hey, those people in their mind, they have made a decision that they are coming to heaven, and surely they will come. He said, nothing will, will stop them from coming. Why? Not because they had so many material, but in their minds, they were certain that they are coming to heaven, such that God had to enter. God was not invited. They did not invite God when they had a meeting to build the tower. God invited himself because when somebody's mind is certain to do something, even the devil in hell cannot stop that person. Now, God says they are so certain that they are coming to heaven and he saw that they are coming. He came, he, he confused the language. How did he confuse the language? You will never confuse the language of people unless you confuse their mind. Because we don't speak. We don't, we don't speak from the mouth, but we speak from the mind. So if you confuse the language, you confuse the mind. Because what comes out of your mouth, it is that which is sitting in your mind. So I believe that God confused their mind, not their language. Are you with me, Vazaran? So now, so now, they couldn't do anything significant after they actually, they couldn't communicate. Remember, communication is not a matter of what comes out of your mouth. It is a matter of what is in your hard drive. Uh, are you with me? It's a matter of what is in your hard drive. You, you just release it from your hard drive. So, so now, the, 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 the information has to be installed first in you before you release it out of your mouth. So, the Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, then the mouth will begin to speak. So, you are not speaking from your mouth. You are speaking from your heart. And when the Bible refers to the heart, when it says, out of the abundance of your heart, it doesn't speak about that part of your body that pumps blood, but it speaks about the lower part of your mind, the lower part of your brain. So, a, a, a human being has got an active mind. Active mind. As I'm speaking to you, there is a part of your mind that is hearing me, that is listening to me. I call it an active mind. But everything that, that, that overflows from your active mind, it drops to your lower mind that I call a subconscious mind, which is your hard drive, your storage, where all the information that has entered your physical, your active mind will be stored. So if, when the Bible says out of the abundance of the heart, it says out of the abundance of the subconscious mind, then the mouth will begin to speak. So the Bible says as a man, a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. As a man thinketh in his heart, as a man thinketh in his subconscious mind. Your subconscious mind is where all the information that you have received is stored. It is stored in your subconscious mind. That is why, that is why what is in your subconscious mind is what you become. Have you, have you seen yourself driving a car from, from the city center of Cape Town, driving to Century City? And as you are driving the car, you ended up getting caught up on the phone. You are on the phone. You are talking on the phone. And when you get to Century City, you, you, you start thinking, how did I, when, when did I pass that robot? You don't even remember. Why? It's because driving is not done by your hands and by your feet. It is done by your subconscious mind. You, when you are going to drive for driver's lesson, 
driving is stored in your subconscious mind. Therefore, it is no longer your mind that is driving, but it's your subconscious mind that is driving. That is why on your first early days when you are learning to drive, it is so hard. You sweat when you take the bend. You sweat when you put the gear because driving is not stored. You are not driving with your hands and your legs, but you drive with your mind. Eh? Are, are, are you with me there? Are you with me there? So, 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 so that, that is why when driving is not in your hard drive, when you have to get into the car, you sweat. Just to change the gear, you start thinking, oh, oh, oh number one, number one, number one, number one, number, number, number two, number, number two. The, 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 the gear, when you put the gear, everything about you puts the gear. But once the driving is in your hard drive, you don't even know when to change the gear. It just happens. It just happens. It just happens. You, it just happens. It just, nobody tells you. It, it just happens. Why? Because it is stored there. So that's why the Bible says, out of the abundance of the hard drive, your mind, your mouth will speak. So as a man thinketh, there. So is he. So you are, your life is a quality of what sits in your mind. That is why you cannot change the quality of life you live unless you change what is stored there. Are you with me? So, so, so now, so now you, when, when you are walking, it's not your feet, your legs that are walking. It's your mind that is walking. That is why you will never walk in a direction that is against what you are thinking. Now, now, that, that is why. Can, can I shock you, church? That is why, Bazalwane, when you find a madman, a madman can go and eat something that is poisonous, that kills people, and he will not die. Because when the mind is destroyed, a person is already dead. So how can you kill someone who is already dead? A madman can sleep and eat in a place where you just go once and eat a little and you will have fever and you will go and, and exhaust all your medical aid. Because your sickness is not where it is paining, but your sickness is in your mind. That is why when you have stayed in the hospital for too long, they can see that you are resisting healing. They do to you something called placebo surgery. Placebo surgery. Sometimes they give you a placebo injection. A placebo injection, they take the longest injection ever. They put water, just pure water from the tap, and they say, show us your bum. They put it heavily such that you will feel pain. But before they put that injection, they orientate you. They say, this is the last injection we have in the whole entire hospital. They say, nobody has ever escaped this one. Today you are leaving the hospital, you are going home. They are not fixing where the injection is going. They are fixing the mind where the sickness is sitting. <laughs> when they put it, they bring the most biggest doctor who is in the hospital. When he puts it, he, they want you to feel it going. And then when you feel it going, you will say, I've never felt pain like this. Surely I am healed after today. <laughs> Some other time, they take you to surgery. They open you up. They open you up. They call it a placebo surgery. They open you up. All the doctors, they come, they stand here, knowing that they are doing... A placebo surgery is called a fake surgery. They cut you with razors and open you up. Brrr. They do nothing and they close you again. Zoop. And when you, when you wake up and see this thing here in your mind, you say, ah, uh ah, -uh, this is the worst one. I am going home. <laughs> Go and Google it. You will know about it. The most of your problem are not where you see them, but they're in your mind. Poverty is not in your pocket, but it is in your mind. Fruitfulness and multiplication is a matter of what is in your mind. 
That is why in South Africa, they are very poor people. Very, 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 very poor. I, I spoke about the brutality of poverty. Poverty is very brutal. A place where poor people stay, you'll find the graveyard. The graveyards are only in the area where poor people are because they die a lot. They don't die just because death is there. They die because they are poor. When you are poor, you can't control even death. Look at how many police vans where poor people stay because they are the most dangerous people in the society. When you are poor, I'm telling you, when you are poor, you are a problem of yourself. <laughs> when you are poor, such that even when you give to the poor, God made it clear that when you give to a poor person, there is no blessing there. God says, the one who gives to the poor, he lends to God. He lends to God. If I come to you now, if you give to the poor, you are lending to God. If I come to you now and give you 1,000 rand, I expect you to bring my 1,000 rand as is. There is no profit there. There is no, it's not an investment. I am just giving you 1,000, bring it back as 1,000. So when you give to the poor, whatever you gave to the poor, the amount God will give it back to you. But there is no addition in that. And God says, people, poor people will always be there. Yes. And you, you can't, you, 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 don't, 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 don't end up not bringing tithes at church and say, I gave it to the poor. Yes. Tithing is not for the poor people. Because, yes. are you here? Yes. The one who gives to the poor, he learns, the only thing that happens to you as you give to the poor, your relationship with God become stronger because if I keep borrowing you money, you bring it back. I borrow you, you bring it back. So we just have a relationship but that relationship has got no profit. <laughs> are, are, are you here? <laughs> are, are you here? Yes. There is no profit. You are just lending to God. It's borrow and giving, borrow and giving but there is no profit. It's not a profitable thing. Why God, why, why God doesn't give you a profit when you give to the poor? It's because he doesn't want them to stay poor forever. He does not want them to stay poor forever. <laughs> Actually, I said to you yesterday, when you are poor and you remain poor, you are very anointed. You need a great anointing to be rebellious to what, what is God's intention for your life. To stay poor, you need a great anointing. It's easy to get wealthy than to remain poor. Because to get wealthy, you are flowing in the direction of the wind. But to stay poor, you are flowing against the wind. Because God, it's God who said, be fruitful and multiply. So in the direction says, be fruitful and multiply. So when you are becoming fruitful and multiply, you are flowing in the direction of the wind. It's easy. But if you resist that and stay poor, you are fighting the wind. That is why there are so many para out there. God knows that they are there. He doesn't do anything about them. He's waiting for a preacher. The only thing that can solve the issue of paras is not the government. It doesn't matter how many tons of food the government will bring to the dungeon where they are living. The government will never finish them. Will never, will never, will never. It needs somebody who will come and, and enter the mind. Whoever has got access to your mind, he has got access to your future. That is why I always tell the girls at church, if you don't want to join with that boy, don't allow him to talk to you. Because if he can access your mind, he has got your heart already. If he can speak to you, even when you are sleeping at home, <laughs> you, you, you find him here. He's here. I don't know how he entered the house, but already he is in the house. How did he enter? You allowed him to speak to you. If you don't want to become what I say, never listen to me. Because if you ever listen, I have occupied your subconscious mind. 
Mm. That is why the Bible says, do not actually, do not actually, oh, you believe come and listen to this. Do not be conformed to the standard of this world, but allow your mind to be renewed, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. The issue of life, the issues of life are in the mind. Your mind is the center at which your life is programmed. Your life is programmed in your mind. The standard of life you are living is a level of what is in your mind. You will never succeed in life beyond what you think. You will never succeed in life beyond what you think. You are as poor as you think you are poor. That is why after you are born again, the first thing that God instills in the, in, in a, in a believer is that let your mind be transformed. Change the way you think. He says, let the sick say, I am healed. And let the poor say, how can you say I am rich when you are poor? It's because God knows that poverty is not where you see it, but poverty, poverty is in your mind. And as it is in your mind, it affects what you say. So in order for you to get out of it, start saying something that is against what you see. That is why he says faith is to be sure of what you hope for. Eh? Is to be sure of what you hope for. So which means now, if you are sure of what you hope for, it means that you speak what you hope for, even though you do not see it, but because you hope for it, you speak it as if it is there. We speak things that are not as they were and they become. You, 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 you will never ever call yourself a millionaire. Actually, that is why the Bible says this, this, this gospel is foolishness to those who are perishing. But it is power to us. Why it says this gospel is foolishness? Because we speak, we speak something that is foolishness. While you are broke, you say, I am rich, I'm wealthy. Yes, I'm wealthy. Why you say you are wealthy? It's because you are speaking. You, you refuse to allow your mind to be filled with the fact that with, with the things that you see. Actually, our fact is not what we see. Our fact is what we believe. We believe it and we speak it. And as we speak it, we, 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 we impregnate the system that will bring forth what we are saying. So we are not governed by what we see. We are governed by what we believe. If you can work out your faith towards what you want to get, you will get it even if it's not there. Ay, ay, ay. Now, the most important thing, fruitfulness and multiplication is something that is an inheritance for the believers. It's an inheritance for the believers. But not just any believers, the matured believers. Matured believers. Have you, have you seen Millies coming out of a baby, baby plant of millies. Millies, when you plant it on the, on the ground, it has to grow and mature first and gain strength so it will actually be able to carry. You know? It, it, it's I don't know what is it. It's kwebu. <laughs> yeah? So it will be able to carry the corn. So it is not the, the small little tree of millies, but the tree has to grow. That is why fruitfulness and multiplication is not for baby children, for baby Christians. When you are a baby Christian, it is good. Everybody is born again as a child of God. But it is not God's intention for people of God to remain children. You must grow and mature and become a son in the house of God. You know, let me, let, me, let, me, let me tell you something. There's a mentality of children of God and a mentality of matured, born again children of God. Those that I call sons. Sons are for production. Children are for receiving. Can I say it again? Sons are for production. Children are for receiving. Nobody expects anything from a child. 
but a father will always expect from a son that because the son has grown up, he will bring forth fruit and he will bring forth multiplication. A believer who is still a baby cannot manifest fruitfulness and multiplication. Hmm? Ask your neighbor, are you a child or you are a son? Are you a child or you are a son in this house? Um, uh, ask again, say, are you a child or you are a son in this house? Wait for an answer. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, that is why God, when he builds, he builds generationally. He builds things to last. He builds things that will last. In any family where there is no son, they will always, the father will always feel uncomfortable when it comes to the issues of him transferring his wealth to generation and generation. Because it is only sons who are able to move things from generation to generation. Are, are you with me? Not just children, sons. When I talk about a son, I am not limiting anything to gender but you grow and become a son, whether you are a male or a female. Are you with me? Even in the house of God, you can't do much with children, but you can do so much with sons. There's a mentality of children even in the house of God. And there's a mentality of sons in the house of God. Only sons are able to produce fruits, not children. When you come home and you find your child there by the nanny, what the child does? Ah, mommy, mommy, mommy. They want to eat whatever you are bringing. But when you have sons, they come and help you to carry. They say, how are you, dad? How are you, dad? How was your work? You know, how was everything at work? Okay, oh, thank you, dad. Thank you, dad. Love you, dad. Thank you, thank you. Because they have grown up and they begin to show you what they have done while you were away. But children, they want to eat what you brought. But sons, they want, they want to show you what they did while you were away. Ah. Ah. Now, now, what is that? That is sons, when a father is not there, sons will always work hard so that they will show father something, a fruit, that while father was away, this is what they did. But children, when the father is away, they cry. <laughs> I miss him. I miss him. They do not work to produce fruits. Because in their mind, they are waiting for somebody to give them something. But sons, in their mind, they have a contribution mentality. When father brings something, I must bring something. That is why with children you cannot do much. Because children are so much dependent. But sons, they've got a contribution mentality. That is why. That is why. Fruits do not come from children. If you want to be ready, church, to be fruitful, then multiply. Start now. Push yourself to grow and become a son. Push yourself to grow and become a son. Because if you are a child, oh glory, what children do? Children, the only thing they know is to complain. They complain about everything. When they are hungry, they complain. When they are full, they complain. You don't even know which direction they are taking. Why? Because they are children. But when you have sons, when you have done well, when you have paid their school fees, they say, thank you, daddy. Thank you. Thank you, daddy. Thank you, daddy. And they say, I will pay it back to you. They say, I will pay it back to you. Because they are matured. 
And then they even feel your pain. Sons feel the pain of the father. But children, they believe that father is a provider no matter what. They don't know what it takes for the father to, to provide, but it doesn't matter. They want it. You will give a baby this titty, the baby will finish it and go, eh, eh. you give this one, and they will finish, eh, eh. you try this one, all are empty, but they know you're supposed to provide. It's a mentality of children. Children, they want, but sons, they give. That is why with children, you cannot do much. It's not God's intention for you to be born again and remain a child. Because when you are a child, you are good as a wallflower in the house. <laughs> it's just that you are a live wallflower. Can, can, I, can I? Oh, my time is up. Jesus Christ. No. You will never be productive. Until you become a son. A sonship is a mentality. It is not an age issue, but it's a mentality. Oh, glory to God. Sonship is an issue of mentality. Children, when they come to work at church to do something, they expect any of the leaders to come and say, oh, well done, well done, well done. Well, those are children. If nobody did that, they get offended and they don't come back again. But sons, they say, I do it because it's my home. If I don't do it, who is going to do it? It's my home. Because sons have a mentality of a family. But children have a mentality of self. Everything they do, they want to see what is there for me to gain. Now, can, can, I, can, I, can, I, can I take this one further? Everything that they do, they want to see what is there for me. But sons, they come even when nobody knows. When sons see the father not speaking, they come closer to the father. Say, Papa, is everything all right? Only sons can do that. Sons, they don't only eat and be full. They also eat and see if the father has eaten. But children, they will eat and be full and want more food and want more food and want more food and want more food. Even if the one who is giving them food has never eaten anything, they don't care. When they are full, they will sleep. <laughs> Look at your neighbor. Are you a son or a child in this house? Look at your neighbor and say, are you a son or a child in this house? Only sons are a heritage in the house, not children. When you are serving in this house, there is a fruit thereof that comes from you serving. But do not serve as a child. Serve as a son. Hmm? Do not serve as a child, but serve as a son. Children, they complain about music, about sound, about band, about everything, everything, everything. Children, they complain. But sons, they say, let us all fix it. It is our duty to fix it. Look at your neighbor and say, are you a son or a child? Are you a son or a child? Are you a son or a child? I'm giving you, can I give you some differences between sons and children? So you will know, sons and children. Sons build the house. But children, they simply serve in the house. Sons. Children, they say, I'm just an usher at church. 
But since they say the church is God's house, I will ensure that every need of the pastor and the people is met to the best of my ability. Children says, that's not my job. But son says, someone needs to do it. Why not me? I'm talking about being fruitful. Children, they grab the ministry whenever they get an opportunity. But sons, they wait for, they wait to inherit the ministry from the father. They wait for the appointed time. Is it there? Sons are sent, but children, they just go. Sons are sent by the father, but children, they just go without anybody sending them. That's why they have trouble when they get there. They will try all the sermons of the father. When they are finished, they've got no well to drink. They start Google. Google, 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 Google. So sons are family orientated, but children are issue or ministry orientated. They love issues. They gossip at church. Hey, they gossip about everybody at church. That's why their hearts are always blocked. They cannot hear spiritual things. Only sons can easily hear spiritual things. Can I speak? Can I talk? Sons are interested in the father's agenda rather than doing their own things. Look at the neighbor and say, are you a son or just a child? Sons are privileged, orientated, but children, they know their rights. They know their rights. It's my right to be visited in the hospital when I'm sick. They don't even say, Lord, I thank you that two people came today. But children, they say, if the pastor didn't come, if the pastor didn't come, it's a mentality. Somebody say it's a mentality. Sons will use the language of the family. But children, they will become anybody. When you see them getting an opportunity here, you will see T.T. Jakes. You will see someone else. You will see someone else. But sons in the house, they want to be like the father. They want to speak like the father. When they take the microphone, they imitate the father. But those who don't understand who they are, they imitate everybody around the world. They become nobody. Because they don't have identity. When you have a father, that's where your identity you find. Are you here with me? Are you here with me? Are you here with me? Say, I am a son. I am a son. I am ready to produce. When sons relocate from Cape Town to Deben, they don't change the name. If you are name, give me one surname. If you are Isaiah when you are in Cape Town, when you go to Deben, you don't become a Jones. Children, they do that. But sons, when they leave Cape Town, they carry their surname. If they leave Cape Town and move to Johannesburg, it means that the glory restoration assembly has entered into Johannesburg. That's the mentality of the sons. But those who don't understand who they are, when they get to Johannesburg, they will join any other church and become whatever that church is. Somebody say, it's the devil. That is why there's a man I know there in, in Nigeria. I watched him on TV. His language is not very good. He's a big prophet. His language is not very good. But I like the way he speaks because, you know, when he speaks, it, it, they go, the, he's going to bless you when he speaks. He's got people there in his church called wise men. 
Some of them, they, they, they are fluent in English. But only because of the father, they reduce their English to speak like the father. Even though they can speak fluently, they, they, they reprogram themselves to speak like the father. That is what, the, what is called the impartation of grace. They even comb like him. They even wear the same shirts like him. That is called generational blessing. Ask your neighbor, who do you look like? <laughs> Ask your neighbor again, who do you look like? real sons they even cover the nakedness of the father but children they expose it you remember the issue of Noah and his sons some of them were children they went and laughed hey, 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 the father is naked but those who were sons they, they took the garments they went like this they covered the nakedness of the father when the church has got real sons you will only hear good news. Even if there are bad news in the church, nobody will hear about them because they, don't, they are not the messengers of bad news, but they are messengers of good news. They speak good news everywhere they are. I am telling you, only sons can multiply the membership of the church, not children. Can you, can, can you look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, are you a son or a child? Are you a son or a child? Are you ready to produce? Children, they use the weakness of their father to promote themselves. Mm. Mm. Son's mentality honors the chain of command for productivity. When you want to produce. Sons! They know the laws of the house. They, knows the, they know the teachings of the house. Sons, they force themselves to enjoy home. Can I say this one? Sons will always force themselves and, 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 and change situations so that they will be joyful at home. Even when the father drinks, they will never allow anybody who is not a member of the family to talk about the drunkardness of the father. They will fight until they're dead. If anybody say, your father is a drunkard, they, they, they will fight him. Even if he drinks, nobody else must talk about it. Because it's not your business. It is my family business. How can you talk about my father? You defend your father. Because you know you came from him. Children are the heritage. Now, children, they understand the language of the father. Children, they don't understand the language of the father. They are still murmuring. But sons, they understand the language of the father. That is why when God came to us, giving us Jesus, he said, we've got to change our mind. He said, let, your, that, let that mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. Why? Because God knew we will never understand him unless we have the mind of Christ. What is the mind of Christ? The mind of Christ is the knowledge of who God is. You will never know God unless you know Christ. We need to have a mind of Christ to understand God. When God gave us Jesus, Jesus came with the kingdom of God. And when he came with the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God came with a completely new mentality at which we can produce those results. You cannot produce results as a child of God with the earthly mentality. You've got to come to a point where you will change the way you think. The earthly mentality says, if I have to get money, Whosoever I find on the street, it doesn't matter what it takes. I've got to grab his cell phone. I've got to catch him. And that is why the earthly mentality said, kill to succeed. 
But the heavenly mentality doesn't say that. The heavenly mentality, when you are a born again child of God, you know how to multiply your things. How to multiply your things, you allow them to go on the ground. When your things go on the ground, it is a process at which they can bring forth fruitfulness and multiplication. You are here sowing a seed. This is a seed that you are, you are sowing. You are here sowing a seed. You are sowing a seed of your presence. And that seed of your presence will germinate and bring a multiples of blessing just before, because you came. Just because you came, there is a blessing that is coming upon you. Before anything happens, there is a blessing of coming. There is a blessing of coming. If you come back again tomorrow, again tomorrow, there is another blessing coming upon you. By the time this conference comes to an end, you have multiples of blessing upon you. You have sown a seed of coming. Worse now, if you take it further. If you take it further. The language of success in the kingdom of God. God says, as long as earth remains, seed time and harvest time will never cease. Why? As long as there is you, that season cannot cease. Because if that season ceases, you cannot produce that. If the season of sowing and reaping comes to an end, while a believer is still on earth, you will never be fruitful and multiply. That is why the kingdom of God came to us with principles. We've got to have the mind of Christ. We've got to have the mind of Christ. How do we produce fruit? We sow. If you do not sow, there is no fruit. How do we sow? We sow because we have the mind of the kingdom. In the kingdom of God, the language of success is sowing and reaping. If you avoid sowing and reaping, you are avoiding fruitfulness and multiplication. Are you with me? If you avoid sowing and reaping, and remember, the harder you sow, the harder, the, the, the more you will reap. It's a principle. Unfortunately, it is always hard when you approach it with the mind of the world. You've got to tap into the mind of God and then you will give with joy because of what you see ahead, not of what you see happening while you are doing it. Are you with me? That is why everything about the kingdom of God is an act of faith. You can only do it by faith. If you take away faith, it is impossible. Why? Because you do not do it with the mind of this world, but you do it with the mind of God. Let your mind be renewed. Let your mind be you, you, you let your mind be renewed. Renew your mind. Now listen to me. Now, when the Bible says, if God wants to trust you with a million rand, he, he will come and check whether he whether you are trusted in the hundred rand that you have. A lot of people are a stumbling block to their next million because they failed to be trusted in their first hundred. If you rob me now, if I give you my money now, 1,000 rand, and when you bring it back, you bring it short, can I give you 2,000 rand? Then why are you praying that I give you more when you have robbed me on the first one that I gave you? Even if you pray, I will still refuse. There are people who have actually canceled their own prayers. They are, pray wrong, they are praying wrong prayers because their relationship in terms of money is not good with God because they have robbed him for, the, for what he has given them before. They are hoping for God to give them more, yet they are still not clear with what he has given them already. He says, if you don't bring your 10% out of what I give you, you have robbed me. You are a thief. Can you trust a thief with more than what you have given him before and he robbed you with? 
When you are not honest and consistent in tithing, you are telling God, for now, our financial relationship is still not good. Even if I pray for more, don't give me more. Wait until this relationship is fixed. He says, you have robbed me. Why God says you have robbed me? You are worse than an arm robber. An arm robber will rob someone's house, but you are robbing God himself. When you cannot tithe, you are robbing God. You are robbing heaven. Look at your neighbor and say, are you a tither? Or an arm robber? I am giving you the ways of getting to fruitfulness and multiplication. I told you yesterday that there were times where I gave out of pain. I gave out of pain. The last one I told you is when I gave Bishop Nklapo my S500. I knew. Though it was painful, I knew. It's, it is something. You, if God can only give you a revelation of people who are gossiping and those who are witches at church and he cannot give you a revelation to give, you are too low for God. You only know which is a church, which is and wizards, which is, yes, he's a witch and he's a wizard. You only get that revelation. You, that, that is how far you can go. Which means you, you are not trusted by God. You are a child. Only sons can take a car, key, and say, Lord, you can trust me with this. I can sacrifice it for what is on your on in you is better than what I have. You don't give. Remember, I said to you, when you give, the blessing flows from highest concentration to the lowest concentration. Such that when you give to the lowest concentration to the poor, there's no blessing. The Bible says that the lesser is blessed by the better. So if you want the blessing, you give to the highest. When you give to God, you are saying, let it overflow. Let it flow. Now, the first level of giving is tithing. If you can be honest in tithing, you have done step number one. Tithing is step number one. Why? Tithing, it does not actually take much to to examine your faith because you are told how much you must give. God tells you it's 10%. So you cannot, you cannot negotiate it. It's not negotiable. So it, 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 you are told give 10%. But when you bring a seed, it's a different story. You tell God how great he is. That is when the greatest blessing is sitting. Every church out there, Bazalwan, they teach this Bible. But why all the churches are not the same? Every church, when God sends a man to start a church, he will give him grace that will make that church differ from any other churches. Every church is different by the grace that flows in that church. It takes a lot. It takes a son to be able to recognize the grace that is upon that man of God. It's one thing to come and sow at church here. Yeah. Come, Bazan, let's give. You come and give. That's, that's one level. But when you get a revelation to take the best and go and kneel down there and put it there is another level of revelation. That's why our churches are poor, are full of people who don't understand how to relate with grace. If you don't know how to relate with grace, hey, Bazan, I have laid hands on people until their weak fell down. Until I saw the weak falling down. And then, and, and, and then, and then they, they, there was no miracle. If you do not give, the greatest thing that can bring results in your life is giving. Because as long as earth remains, seed time and harvest time will never cease. Ask your neighbor, are you a giver? Ask, are you a giver? In God's language, you will never manifest fruitfulness and multiplication until you become a giver. 
Not just a giver, a dangerous one. Ask your neighbor, are you a dangerous giver? And ask, how dangerous are you? Let us stand on our feet tonight. Now, hear me and hear me well tonight. Hear me well tonight. The man of God told me, this is not a fundraising conference. It's a teaching conference. After this conference, never allow yourself to fail to count when God elevates you. A lot of people, when they're earning 1,000 rand, they know how to calculate 10%. Let God leave them higher. They don't even know how to calculate 10%. And their calculators, they stop working. My calculator doesn't work. They, they don't know 10%. When you are not honest and consistent in tithing, you are restricted without you knowing in bringing forth fruits. You live a life that has got limitations. If you want to live in financial freedom, be a honest tither and be a consistent tither. Look at your neighbor. Are you a consistent tither? Are you a consistent tither? When, when, when God said, be fruitful, he was expecting that in us being fruitful, we will understand these laws. These are the laws of fruitfulness and multiplication. Be a tither. That is step number one. Number two, be a giver. Can you lift up your hands and just close your eyes? What is the, giver, the biggest thing that you have ever given in your life? Remember it. The day you start giving out of pain, you will then provoke God to release everything that he is. I silence lack tonight in everybody's life. May you live a life of a giver after tonight. May you live a life of a giver after tonight. Even if there can be nothing else that you may remember, be a giver tonight. Because as you give, you provoke heaven to open. May heaven open upon your life tonight. I say, may heaven open upon you tonight. I say, may heaven open upon you tonight. When you have become a giver, be a consistent giver, and fruitfulness and multiplication will be your name. You shall be called a multiplication. Any tender, any business, once you enter, they start seeing doors opening because you become a financial miracle yourself. You become a financial miracle yourself. Money is a currency. It flows. And money can only be controlled by those who are living by the laws of money principles of money. Money becomes an enemy of the one who are obedient to its laws. The laws of money to come to you. It says are you a giver? Are you a tither? And when you are a giver and a tither, you are a friend of money. Money loves those who are able to release it. <laughs> money loves those who are able to release it. If you cannot release it, money will never come to you. If you cannot release it, money cannot... Oh, glory. If you cannot release cars, you will battle to pay the installment of one car when others are flowing in, in paying installments of 80 cars without even finding a struggle in paying it. Whatever you cannot give it to God, it will be a burden to keep it with you. Whatever you cannot release it to God, God will never entrust it for you. You will find it a way yourself to get it and sustain it. May the Lord bless this church tonight. May the Lord, call, the Lord cause you to succeed in every area of your life. May the Lord cause money to follow you wherever you go. May you begin to be fruitful and multiply after tonight. 
I say I silence limitations in the area of fruitfulness in your life. I say sky is not the limit. May you flourish from tonight. May you live in abundance after tonight. May you live in overflow after tonight. May you live in abundance after tonight. If you believe me, shout yay! After tonight, there will be financial miracles that will happen in your life. Can you worship us? You can come. Financial miracles are coming upon you. I say financial miracles are coming upon you. There are things that you've been waiting for. I, I, I declare tonight that there is an angel of finances that is coming upon your life in the name of Jesus Christ. No more lack in your bank account. The state of your bank account is changing after tonight. The state of your bank account is changing after tonight. You will be known as a wealthy person in Cape Town after tonight. Money has been released in the atmosphere tonight. Somebody shout, I receive it! Shout, I receive it! I receive it! Now! 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 Shout, money! Hands for Jesus in the name of Jesus. Those people who kept you who kept you on hold for what was yours, it is released tonight in the name of Jesus. It is released tonight in the name of Jesus. Just pray in tongues if you believe me. Randa kabra haba ya baba. Rete kebre hede satayala. Ya baba 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 ya ha. Rete teribo satalaba. Ya tabra hado sataba. Ya baba baba satalaba. Ya tadiba hado satarimanamos. Lift up your hands. Your feet are anointed tonight. And your hands are anointed. Your face shall glow with the glory of God. Wherever you show up, doors will open. Wherever you show up, doors will open. In the name of Jesus, those who stole your money, they will bring it back in multiples. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Everything that you've been waiting for, I command it in the dimension of the spirit. In the name of Jesus, I command it to come to you. 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 After tonight, your life has changed. Lift up your both hands. Father, I thank you tonight. Heaven has opened. Financial miracle is taking place right now. In their cell phones, Father, I release money. I release money tonight. You have done it before. Upon the anointing and grace you have given me. Father, may you open the doors that have been closed upon them. Every single door that the devil has shut, I command it to open tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. It is opening tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody shout by fire. Shout by fire. Shout by fire. Shout by fire. Lift up your hands above your head. They thought you will never drive your own car. I release cars tonight. I release cars tonight. Father, you have given me so many cars so that I can release them to your children. The anointing of driving cars has been released in the atmosphere. Begin to receive it and clap your hands for Jesus. Just clap your hands for Jesus wherever you are. Just clap your hands for Jesus and receive it. Just clap your hands for Jesus and receive it. Lift up your hands above your head. They said you will never own your own house. The devil is a liar. And tonight the devil is in trouble. May I release right now upon your life the anointing of properties. The anointing of properties. The anointing of properties. The anointing of properties. The anointing of properties is coming upon you. It's coming upon you. It's coming upon you. Shout by fire. 
shall by fire shall by fire lift up your hands I didn't know that you love me in this way you love me in this way you love me in this way I didn't know that you favored me this way you favored me this way thank you father I didn't know that you favored me this way you favored me this way you favored me this way I didn't know that you favored me you favored Lift up your hands above your feet. There are people that I release to shipping tonight. Shipping business. I release some people to mining business. Mining, that is where you are going. Mining is there where you are going. I release some people to the, who are going to be traveling all over the world, making money to the ends of the world. I release upon you. It is released. Shout I receive it. Lift up your hands above your head. There are CVs that are being released right now. Kontalibasotai. Commando Sataba. There are passports that are being stamped right now. They are being stamped right now upon your life as a man of God, as a prophet who is standing upon this grace. I release the anointing upon your life. I say you will go to the ends of the world. You will go to the ends of the world. After tonight, you are going there. After tonight, you are going there. Shout yeah! yeah. Lift up your hands one more time. You thought that was a ceiling for you. You have not done anything in the business world. I unleash the grace of higher heights tonight. You are going higher tonight. You are going higher tonight. I prophesy upon you. You are going higher tonight. You are going higher tonight. Your business is going higher. Your business is going higher. Your bank account is going higher. Somebody shout higher. No more limitation. I say no more limitation. If I'm a prophet of God, I declare it upon you. No more limitation. No more limitation. I want to hear you shouting higher three times. Clap your hands for Jesus tonight. Lift up your hands for the last time. I silence lack. After tonight, when you leave that door, you are a changed person. When you come out of that door, there's anointing, there's grace that is upon you. You will never be poor again. You will never be broke again. You will never lack again. You will never suffer again. I want to hear you shouting five times, never! We hope you enjoyed this message from God's servant. Please come worship with us at any of our branches closest to you. Our midweek service on Wednesdays runs from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. And Sunday services 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. and 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. For more information, call any of the numbers on the screen or visit our website.